Okay guys, how's it going? It's Craig here and I thought I'd do a quick kind of probably my first actual subscriber video which I'm kind of just detailing something I'm working on in the background rather than a general review or camera quality test or anything like that so I kind of wanted to give a quick update um, I recently did a Ryzen 1700X review and while the, the general review was grand it's just as probably most people have probably noticed um, there's issues with running Ryzen with memory at high speeds now apparently that's been solved with a lot of motherboard manufacturers uh, it seems as though you can get up to 3000, 3200 megahertz and it's got to do with the the 1T or 2T kind of time and um, settings and stuff and it seems as though we have kind of moved past it in some regards now the board I did my tests on were the, X, the uh, Asus Prime X370 Pro and basically I just couldn't get the memory to run past 2400 megahertz and that was kind of annoying because obviously we'd, we'd expect higher because you could even get DDR3 to go to 2400 megahertz before we made the uh, the move to DDR4 so yeah obviously we want more um, and I've tried pretty much everything I've loosened the timings a good deal but I just couldn't get it to even boot anything past 2400 megahertz so what I'm doing now is I'm switching out this test bench with another board. In fact, my plan was to, uh, I was actually originally going to get another one of these boards for my server. Um, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But because I've had issues with this, the original reason why I got this board was because it was one of the cheaper X370 boards available. And I kind of wanted to show baseline performance in that regard where we were kind of dealing with you know if someone was to get an x370 board this is one of the cheaper ones so this is like the minimum you're going to get so if you spend more money on a better board you'd get better uh, quality and better performance or better overclocking obviously better features and such but then i found out you could get this board which is the uh, msi gaming pro now this wasn't available initially at launch but it is available now and this is about 10 maybe 15 pounds more dearer than the other board and it has a lot more features and one of the big deals about this board, I'm not sure if they have it written on the back. I haven't actually read the back of it yet, but they do state that it does support RAM up to 3200 megahertz. And MSI have been kind of posting about their AXMP, I think it's called, which um, they've kind of shown that they do actually have RAM running at better speeds. So again, I wouldn't recommend going for a board that's just 10, 15 pounds cheaper if this one has the same features. Now, one of the main additions on this board would be that it has 8 SATA versus the 6 on the MSI. But again, I don't think many people are going to worry about that. You can always add an expansion card if necessary. But again, it's more about raw performance. And it'll be nice to see if I can get better overclock on this one. I could get 3.9 gigahertz at about 1.4375 volts, I think it was. Um, which is fairly high volts. Um, it was stable. There was no issues. It's not like it's you know going to do damage or anything like that. You don't really want to go over four point or one point four five, but I do want to see if I can get more out of this board. So this is kind of going to be reviewed as well. I'm going to give this the once over and see if I can get a better overclock with this board versus that. But I still wanted to continue with this video in regards to what I'm doing with this board. So this board and a seventeen hundred X are going in here. Now, so basically, this is my kind of home server, and I have a bunch of hard drives in there. So what was in there before was a ASRock, uh, ble I can't remember that, like DC two hundred six, six hundred two or something um, motherboard. It was basically one of the old X seventy nine server boards, and it had two Intel Xenon uh, E five twenty six seventy processors. You know the cheap ones that you could get. Basically, they gave really good performance for low price but now i've kind of wanted to move away from that they do use a lot more power compared to a single uh, processor and i wasn't really getting like the benefit because it was much older hardware and i think now because ryzen is out and it's much much cheaper i have a spare 1600 uh, 1700x which i'm going to put in there so basically this board um not this heat sink i'm actually going to use i think this heat sink right here which, if I'm not mistaken, is the um, Noctua NHD9L. So that's the heatsink I'm going to use in there. Again, it's more than enough. I'm probably not going to overclock it. I might do a small one, but I might not overclock it at all because I'd probably want to keep the turbo intact and just let it run and not have any worry. But again, I might. I'm not sure. I haven't made a decision on that. Again, I'll be using that board, so I won't be able to get much out of it. And 
the RAM they'll be going in is this. This was the cheapest uh, RAM I could find. This is uh, two 16 gig sticks, tw uh, 2400 megahertz. And the reason I chose this RAM is because I know I can get 2400 megahertz to run, but there are again issues with running RAM if it's dual sided or single sided or um, single rank or dual rank. This is dual rank, but at 2400 megahertz with only two sticks, two dims used, it should be fine. It should run perfectly. Although I'm again not certain because it is 16 gig sticks rather than 32 gig sticks. But there was new BIOS uh, release for this, I think, like two days ago. Um, I think it's 0511 rather than 0502 or 0504, which were, you know, have been out since launch. So, I'm again, I'm going to find out what I can get out of it. I tried to up, um, get the RAM to run higher with the new BIOS, but I just couldn't. Again, 2400 megahertz was the limit I was getting, regardless if I was overclocking the CPU or not. Maybe it's the CPU, because when you overclock the RAM, when the RAM runs higher... The Infinity Fabric, the the connector between the two core, um, sets of cores, the two CCXs on the CPU also gets increased. And that's the reason why you have issues, is that when you run your RAM at a higher speed, you're pushing the CPU to actually run at a higher speed effectively. So that's kind of the reason why you run into issues. So maybe it's not related to the board or even the memory, and it's just that particular CPU. So I will be trying um, the other CPU in the test bench and... Um, basically that other CPU will be going in here and the other this CPU will be going into the MSI board so I'll be able to kind of figure out which is causing which I might even switch them around again and try the new CPU on this board and the MSI board and just see what I can get so I'm going to try a few different things just to see where I can land and see which uh, compatibility issues I run into with different boards but in the meantime what I have to do is I need case okay, so the, the main problem I had was that uh, I realized this earlier on, but I didn't think it was going to be a concern, but um, the Xenon board, the ASRock board, had um, some crappy integrated graphics just to get everything up and running, but obviously with the Ryzen, it doesn't, so I just, I literally got this, that I, this is just a crappy R7 260X, I needed something, I didn't want to have to add power to anything, so again, that'll do the trick, but I was planning to put a better graphics card into it in the future, which would allow me to, I have a Steam link downstairs, but it would kind of allow me to do some more things with the server if I have a dedicated graphics card, a decent dedicated graphics card. Um, the one on the test bench is a um, Gigabyte Winforce 290X. I used to have a Sapphire 290X, but I always keep them running at clock speeds just to keep all the tests fair, and they pretty much have been, so yeah. Um, but that's pretty much the test bench there. It's Right now it's the Asus board, uh, Corsair Vengeance, um, 8 gigs of um, uh, 3000 megahertz RAM, I think it is. Yeah, it's 3000 megahertz. Um, NHD 15S, um, AX1200i. I know that power supply is overkill for this test bench, but it's just the one I've had there for ages. And I'd rather have a much bigger one if I needed it in the future anyway. So that's pretty much it there. Um, that's, again, I might as well show my computer as well. That's my computer. That's. Um, Intel 5960X Rampage 5 Extreme. I built that about two and a half years ago, pretty much when X99 came out. And yes, what what's amazing about Ryzen is that the 1700X overclocked pretty much almost matches the 5960X. Um, uh, not over, you've almost overclocked. Now that one, this I could get about 4.5 gigahertz out of, but it is custom water cooled and it keeps things cool and stuff. But that's on pretty much low volts as well, so that's pretty good. And there's a Fury X in there. That's my monitors. That's just a bunch of shelves and a bunch of nonsense. The room is very messy because I've been kind of taking everything apart and moving everything around, trying to find everything I need. I, again, something I did not know initially. Um, I was using Noctua were kind of to send out their uh, brackets for this, which again, they'll do for anyone, but they sent them out pretty quickly because I did need it for my initial review. Um, so I have the new brackets on there. Everything works grand, but... Uh, initially, I had a H100i on my test bench, on my previous test bench, which was a Gigabyte Z87 um, XOC or whatever. And this was the, the the cooler I was using. Everything was grand, but obviously with the new stuff, I figured I needed a new bracket. I was not aware that you don't actually need a new bracket with the H100i, the V1 version. The V2 version you do, but the V1 version will actually work with a stock you know, AMD board. I know Asus with some of their boards are doing... Um, some like they're given extra they, they have the extra holes and stuff cut so you can actually use any old mount but if you if it uses the stock kind of ring connections which I actually thought I left out here 
moments ago. Yeah, I think, I believe if it uses them on your heatsink, it'll actually still work. So basically, yeah, the H100i works, which I did not know, I know now. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try and throw that on, but I noticed um, when I was uh, looking at one of the fan cables, which I don't seem to have here, but basically, I'll show you now if I can. If you see there, the black kind of plastic thing came out with it, and I've had problems with these cables coming out of the, this heatsink before. I'm guessing that's why they quickly actually changed the design of it because every time I pulled out those cables normally the ca the whole cable came out with it doesn't really matter I can just use the motherboards headers for the fans and stuff I I, I don't really care about that um, and I'd probably prefer to use the motherboards headers anyway and I'll just throw that into uh, the pump header on the motherboard or something so but yeah I just wanted to give a quick video of what I'm doing I will review this board and I will kind of post an article maybe a video and what I was able to do with it, what I was able to get with it. I'm hoping to get a hold of an 1800X and uh, 1700 to do a complete review of Ryzen 7 before Ryzen 5 comes out. And I'm also hoping to get a hold of all of Intel's kind of, you know, X99 and their Kaby Lake um, processors so I can do a kind of an update benchmarks. I, can, I just want to update everything, get everything fresh, get all new benchmarks, get everything done, brand spanking new, do everything right. And just, you know, have up-to-date benchmarks. That's kind of my plan. That's what I'm hoping to do, which I will update you guys in the near future if I can get a hold of them uh, soon enough. But, again, this is just kind of a quick update to what I'm doing. If any of you are interested in any of this or have any questions about what I'm doing here, um, just shoot a comment below and I'll definitely get back to you. So I always keep an eye on the comments for the videos. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will update you. I'll probably, um, I might edit in more after this. I'm not sure. Because I have a lot of stuff I have to get done in the next couple of hours. So I don't know if I'll have time to stop and record everything as I'm doing it. But if I do, this won't be the sign off. But it will be in a moment. I'm just not sure yet. Um, so yeah, basically I have to dismantle everything. Get everything connected up. Originally I had that power supply. That was the cheapest power supply. That was only like, I think £50. And it's, it's, it's a solid power supply. I would never cheap out on a power supply. But it was the cheapest one I could find that had uh, dual 8-pin uh, EPS connectors for the motherboard. Because obviously the motherboard had two CPUs, so I needed two of them. I don't need that anymore, but I'm not going to change the, the power supply. It's 600 watts. It's way more than what's needed for this kind of build, even with all those hard drives. So yeah, that'll work fine. But I might update. I might even do a part two with everything up and running and kind of show you guys what I've got done. I will definitely do a video over the next week once I have everything finished. And kind of give you guys an update on what how I fared out with this board over the Asus board. And just see which one actually performs better. Because they're pretty much priced identically. They have most of the exact same features. This one has two M2 dot slots, M.2 slots. This one only has one. Although to be honest with you, I don't think many people are going to use both. Um, but you never know. But yeah, anyhow. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching guys. Hit the subscribe button if you just want to see more videos in the future. And um, definitely leave a comment if you have any questions about what we're doing here. Please learn.